Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on the file right over here. Once it loads up, you're going to get this message right over here. It just goes over a few of the instructions for the file. You can close that right out and just click the OK button. The next prompt that's going to appear is going to be what's going to allow us to actually add all of the books into this file alone. You're going to click on to get more and then you're going to import additional materials followed by clicking on the add file. Once you do that, you're going to click on the file that I have in the discord that you can download. When you see this pop up right over here, you'll know that it worked. Now you can just click apply changes. Once you've done that, the character sheet is basically going to confirm what books and materials you actually want in the character creator. On the left hand side is all of the excluded stuff, such as Unearthed Arcana, and on the right hand side you can see all of the source books along with all of the modules. It's already set up the right way, so just click apply. The navigational bar will appear on the side, you can just close that right out. And now we'll just start filling in our information over here, I'll put my name over here, and I'll put my character's name right here. Now we can finally start getting into the uh, meat of things. We're going to put what our class is, and you can just click this drop down right over here. I'm going to go with Rogue for now. Right next to that, we'll be able to pick our subclass, and I'm going to go with Arcane Trickster. Now I know we'll all be starting at level 1, but to actually show you what's going on, I'll go with level 3. After you've done that, click Apply, and it'll take a couple seconds to actually register and load everything into the character creator. Eventually you'll get this prompt which will show you all the changes that actually took place. This will happen a lot through it. You'll be able to click see changes and in this area you can see what was there and what actually got changed right over here. Click OK and then if the prompt is actually too big that you don't see the OK button, just click uh, tab a couple of times and then click enter afterwards to close this out. Once that finishes uh, loading up, you'll see a Patreon pop up. Just click OK, you can ignore that. Moving on to race, I'm going to select human, and I will pick the uh, variant subtype of it so I can show you some more advanced features. After clicking OK, the next prompt that's going to appear is going to be asking for your languages based on the character that you picked, and you'll be able to just type it in right over here and then click OK. After all that registers, the prompt that shows what actually changed will appear again. You can see on the left hand side what was and now what is with the uh, new additions. Just click OK and if you don't want this to keep popping up, you can click the little check mark in there for it to not appear. Now we're going to go click with a subclass and let's go with charlatan since we're rogue after all. Some backgrounds have sub backgrounds, so we'll just be able to click on one of those in this drop down right over here. Now we can finally move on to our stats by clicking this button right over here. We'll be going with point by of course. Uh, you actually don't have to follow the standard array um, for the most part. If you want, the other option is 15, 14, 13, 10, and 10. Um, and of course you don't have to follow that either. You can just go with the regular standard array. Once everything's to your liking, just click apply. And as always, the uh, changes dialog will appear. You can click to check if you want to see what actually changed. Then you can click OK and close that out. Scrolling down a bit, we can see that a lot of the documents have been filled out. In this section over here, you can see your languages and your proficiencies. And uh, moving over to this section over here, you can actually see all of your skills. You can see that some proficiencies have already been filled out. And if you hover over where proficiency would be, you can actually see where they came from. Looking through these, I see that there's still a few more that I can actually fill in. So as a rogue, I'm going to pick Stealth, Perception, Persuasion, and Insight. Now there's still a few things that I can fill out, so I'm going to scroll down over here, and you can actually click on this Class Feature button over here to see what else is selectable. You can see that I have some expertises that I haven't selected, and all of the highlighted ones are the ones that I have proficiency with. I can click on to that twice, and each time that I click onto them, I'll be able to add the expertise to those skills. This section over here is more for the backgrounds and whatnot. It's up to you if you want to click on them and add a background that's already inside of the uh, character sheet, or if you want to fill something in that's your own. Going back over to the class features, you can actually see that there's another section. Um, this is just from another book. Uh, you can take a look at that, see if it's interesting, and if you want to use it, just give me a heads up. Looking right over here, we can see our racial traits, and of course there's one thing that we missed with our stats, 
but fortunately that's easy enough to change. We can go right back up, click to our um, abilities, and then we can actually put in the ability scores that we missed before. Click apply and then we can see that we actually have a feat because we're a variant human. In order to select that feat, we're just going to scroll down just a little bit to this section over here. It shows, yes, we have a feat over here because we're variant human. Click the drop down and then you can type in what feat you want or you can scroll over and see what you want. I'm going to go with crossbow expert for now. Scrolling up a bit, I will uh, show you where you can place your weapons. While we won't be starting off with uh, starting equipment or anything, this is where you'll be able to add it once you do acquire this equipment. Um, as a rogue, I'm going to put in a crossbow, and once you click onto that, you'll see that the entire field gets filled out. On the bottom left over here, you can actually keep track of your ammunition as well. I'll also throw a dagger onto here because it's one of the other pieces of equipment that a rogue can have. Scrolling up just a little bit, you can see some of the additional actions that you have as an arcane trickster rogue. And remember, you can hover over anything if you don't know what it is, and it'll give you the information for it and where it came from. Now back to the top of the page, uh, we have the armor section over here. You can click the drop down, and while we won't be starting off with armor, you are able to click unarmored. If you do acquire armor, you can simply click the button over there, and it'll fill in your AC and the rest of your stats. For HP, we'll be rolling for it. And since we're level 1 at the very beginning, you can simply set it to max. Only a few more things left to go over with, so we'll scroll down a little bit so that we can get to our inventory section. Now, like I said, we won't be starting off with inventory or anything, but this can be very useful for when we do purchase something. You can actually hover over to see what your character would normally have, and when you click on it, you can have a selection of packs, tools, and whatever else. Once you click onto that, then it'll fill in, auto-fill in everything. Back to the top, and actually one of our most important things will be our spells. You're going to click this button right over here. You're going to click Generate Spell Sheet. Once you do that, on the left hand side of the screen, you'll be able to see how many spells and of what level your character is able to have. So now we're going to move over to the cantrip section. We'll click down on that and it'll have a list of cantrips that we're able to have for our class. I'll just select uh, Booming Blade and Message. Moving on to our actual spells, we can see that we're able to know two first level spells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll over here to our first level spells and then I'll be able to select two spells. Last but not least, we have our bonus spells that we can pick from. Uh, one's automatically selected based on our class, the other one we are able to select, and for this one I'm going to go with Find Familiar. One of my favorite things about this program is that it actually has a spell lookup while you're selecting your spells. So you can go to this selection over here, click on a spell, and then click show full description. It'll give you all the information you could ever want along with the sources for them. Once you're done with that, you can click close and then continue to next dialogue. You won't have to worry about this pop over here, so just click generate spell sheet. This will take a while depending on how many spells you actually have selected, so just give it a moment even if it looked like it froze. It'll even say it on the bottom right hand side of the screen. When it finishes, it'll automatically take you to your spell sheet. This section over here is going to have all relevant information when it comes to spell casting, such as your spell casting ability, your attack modifier, your spell saving throw DC. You can keep track of how many spell slots you have available. It'll have the spell descriptions in a nice, short, concise manner. And then you can even hover over it and get a full description of the spell as well. Now because I have the Find Familiar spell, I can actually add a familiar to my sheet. It's actually rather simple. You're going to click this button right over here. Now you're going to create from Find Familiar spell and you'll be able to select which familiar you'd like. I personally want to pick an owl, so I'm going to click on that and then a dialogue's going to appear and I can choose which type of owl I want. So we're going to go with this one right over here, click OK, and then everything's going to autofill in for you. Last but not least, we can give this little guy a name, and scrolling down, you can see all the information for your familiar is filled in. Now I'm sure all druids are going to love this. You're actually able to click this button right over here and create a wild shape sheet. Once that's loaded up, you can click down right over here and select any creature you'd like to turn into. Clicking on that is going to autofill all of the details for you. It even includes what your stats would be so that you won't have to bounce back and forth between your main character sheet and what your current wild shape form is. You can even select multiple wild shapes and save them all on the same sheet so that you can print it out for later no matter what you're going to turn into.
And finally, when all of that's finished up, you can choose to either print this out or flatten this so that you can actually use it on your phone as well. You're simply going to click that button right over here. Once it's done its process and everything, you can save the file and then you can transfer it to your phone, either using Google Drive, your USB, or any other method that you have. I hope this gave you a general rundown for how to use this program. If you guys have any more questions, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to help.